Good morning. Welcome to Grace for Today. Blessings to each of you. God bless you and may the Lord's face shine upon you and rejoice today because it's his day. He is Lord of the day. He is Lord of the day. And when we allow him to do what he does for us, he gives us grace for whatever we're uh, faced with, whatever comes our way. Good morning, Lucas. Hey, Sister Heather. God bless everybody. We're going to give you a few moments to come on, and then we're going to get started. Amen and amen. Good morning, Sister Anita. Blessings to you. We're going to take a few moments. Hey, Sandra. Good morning. All right. We're going to just wait just a little bit longer, and then we're going to start. Um, so... We've been talking about taking the land. Good morning. Hey, y'all. And taking the land. And uh, I hope that you've been encouraged by the word and um, expecting God. You know, I text a friend of mine and I was she was asking me, how are you doing? I said, I am expecting great things. And I didn't put them in the same sentence. But, um, but I want, we should be expecting expecting God to move. We should be looking for his hand to show himself strong on our behalf because God's, the scripture says the eyes of the Lord are running to and fro throughout the earth, looking for someone to show himself strong on their behalf. I want him to show himself strong on my behalf. Move for me. Hallelujah. And praise God. God bless everybody. Let's get started. So we've been talking about the children of Israel and their posture toward God. And, um, <laughs> and um, here we see that this is this is after uh, Korah and his little group got um, they were the the earth opened up and swallowed them up and then the fire of God consumed the others who were joining and sometimes you need to join everybody because everybody ain't trying to follow Jesus and you don't want to get caught up in where they are when they're outside of the plan of God the will of God but here we pick up the next day the scripture says. In Numbers chapter 16, and this is number 16 overview, but number 16, um, look at verse 41. Um, praise God. We're going to be praying for Sister Ingram. Amen. Sister Annie Louise sent you a text last night, Brother uh, Elder Ingram, because we were she was on my mind and we were praying for her. We're believing God to bring it through. Hey, Sister Hope. All right. So the scripture says the next morning, Kirby, on the morning, on the morrow, all the They've seen God move. They've seen God do things. But here again, they were preserved and they followed the, the, the voice of God when he said, do not, hey, Sister Annie Ingram, God bless you. And he's told them to move from around Korah and those people. He said, I'm going to show them who I am. I'm going to show them that I can do what they never can. Here, he says, the next morning, the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, saying, you have killed the people of the Lord. They, they, they're they not a quick study. They're not catching a clue that God is saying, I am who I said I am. I can do what I, I can anoint who I want to anoint. You don't even have to agree. Here, I, I didn't plan to read all this, but it was important because I skipped verses 42 and 43. But the scripture says, and it came to pass when the congregation was gathered against Moses and against Aaron, they were assembling to murmur and complain about Aaron and about Moses, that they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation, the place where the people of God gathered. And behold, the cloud, not a cloud, the cloud covered it and the glory of the Lord appeared. God will fight for you. The people may not understand it. They don't have to. But God knows how to get it clear who, whose you are. And Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, here, verse 45, Get you up from among the, this congregation, that I may consume them as in a moment. And they fell on their faces. Here again, you see Moses and Aaron learning the right posture before God is on your face. On your face. Good morning, Jay. On your face. Here, verse 47. 
And Aaron took as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation. And behold, there was a plague. God said, I'm going to destroy them. Within a moment, that's what he said. I may consume them as in a moment. So God caused a plague to come because they were murmuring and complaining. I'm just trying to show you they didn't go into the promised land. They should have caught a clue. They didn't. And here you have another instance of their posture. Of their posture of not trusting God. Or believing what God does is right. God is the God of all flesh. And he loves us. But he also will bring judgment. And that's what he did. And Aaron uh, followed Moses' command, ran to the midst of the congregation. Behold, the plague was uh, the plague was, had, was begun among the people. And he put on incense and made an atonement for the people. And he, Aaron, stood between the dead and the living, and the plague was stayed. Aaron had power with God. Aaron had influence with God. When they obeyed God, there was something about their lives that caused the power of God to stop wherever they stood. That God stopped the plague where Aaron stood. He would not cross where Aaron was because Aaron and Moses were his men. They were, they had his name on them. Now, verse 49 says, now they that died in the plague were 14,700. In a moment, God killed, brought judgment, a plague and destroyed 14,700 persons. What a mighty God we serve. If he could do that, don't you ever think that God won't intervene for you. He's not going to go around killing folk, but he is. Good morning, Kasten. He is going to make sure that people who murmur and complain about you. I was listening uh, to a sermon this morning. The man of God was preaching and he was talking about every voice that is rising against you. It stops now. God will move for you. God will turn it around for you. What they meant for evil, God turns it around and makes it a blessing. He will cause your name to be known. He will cause your name to be in the atmosphere. And what they thought was going to cause your demise will cause your elevation. What's that scripture? No weapon formed against us will prosper. It will not produce what the enemy intended. He intended it to destroy you. He intended for it to make sure you didn't come out of this. He wanted to make sure that you did, you lost your mind and that you had to be on medication to regulate yourself. But God said, no, I'm going to speak life over them. I'm going to speak healing over them. They're going to work with me and I'm going to show myself strong for them. I'm going to move on their behalf. Sometimes the thing the enemy is trying to do works because we don't even factor God in. We just believe it's a natural occurrence. My mama had it. My daddy had it. It runs in my family line, but it needs to stop right here because that's a weapon that's been designed against me. It stops here. He says, now they that died of the plague were 14,700 beside them that died about the matter of Korah. The scripture calls it the matter of Korah. Though it doesn't include all of this rebelliousness that's in the hearts of the people. What comes out of you when you're in a trial in a test is sometimes what we need to see clearly and know that that thing needs to be dealt with. Sometimes it's not that the enemy is just so busy and he is, but sometimes it's that God is trying to show us what's in our heart. That we need to purify our hearts. We need to get out all the things that keeps us from living in a manner that brings glory to God. Purify my heart. Sanctify me. I don't want anything to consume my life to the degree that I can't uh, worship you and believe you and trust you at all times. At all times. 
Here you have over 15,000 people dead because they took things into their own hands and believed their way was better, that their way was better. It's God's way. We should want to make sure that we are pleasing God. And he tells us to do all things without murmuring and complaining. Because when we start, it's one thing to, to want to voice your concern so you can get correction or get enlightenment. But it's another thing to agree and to speak against the people of God or things you don't agree or understand with because you oppose that person. You oppose that plan. The will of the Lord be done. Let the will of the Lord be done in that situation and in me. Keep my heart pure. Keep my hands clean. We're not going to throw rocks and hide our hands. Keep my hands clean. Keep my heart pure. Wash my mind so that I can line up. There's a scripture our pastor, I think, quoted yesterday that, that our thoughts will become agreeable with God's that our thoughts become agreeable, line up with his. Let our thoughts become agreeable. And that's why we bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. To the obedience of Christ. I want my thoughts to agree with the word of God. I want my thoughts, my expectation to line up with the word of God. I got to go. And Aaron returned unto Moses unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and the plague was stayed. You have now, get this, be sure I'm about to go. I got to pray. You have these people complaining because of Korah and his folk who rebelled against the man of God and against God. Because Korah was saying, we're just as holy as you. We can do that. And God said, no, I called Moses and I'm going to show you what I mean. Ground open up, swallow up Korah, his family, all their stuff. Fire from heaven consumed all those that were offering incense, thinking that that was, uh, the, and they could do that. They couldn't. They weren't the ones who God had anointed to do that. And then the next morning they wake up with that, with that concept, y'all done killed people. And here go those same words. I wish we could, we could have just stayed in Egypt. But God began to speak. As they were complaining, God showed up at the tabernacle of the, con con tabernacle of the congregation. And God began to speak again. God knows how to get our attention. He knows how to get our attention. He knows how to get our attention. Let's just be open to hear his voice and to follow what he says. It doesn't always, it's not always logical to us because you don't see the end, but God sees the end from the beginning. He knows the way that we take. He knows where you're going. He knows what your tomorrow is. He's already been there. And he's got a future plan for you. Tomorrow we're going to pick up verse 17 with chapter 17. We'll start there with an overview. And I want to quickly cover that in a day or two so we can get to the end of this story. So you'll see what God did. See how God does. How God wants to show his people who he is and what he has in store for us. Let's pray. Father. Thank you so much for what you've done in us and what you're beginning in us, that you're causing our hearts to be open and receptive to you, that we will hear your voice clearly and distinctly, and that your glory will be revealed in our lives. Give us grace to believe and to expect and to trust you, even in the difficult seasons. Wash us thoroughly. Wash our minds. Wash our hearts. Keep us so that our minds will stay on you. Lord, we thank you that for you, that you are our healer. You heal our bodies. You heal our minds. Thank you, Lord God. You bring uh, Sister Ingram. You brought her home, dear God. You're causing her to have a speedy recovery. You're causing uh, others, dear God. Sister Warshida, Lord God. Sister Cassie, you're causing them to recover, to recover that their health 
will spring forth speedily. Lord, we thank you that you cause those who I don't know about who have health challenges, let healing be their bread today. We command the power of God to go wherever they are and bring healing. Father, bless our children, dear Lord. We thank you, Lord God, that you protect them from every device of the enemy. I thank you, Lord God, that you cover our homes, our loved ones, and let your anointing rest upon us. Go before us. As we leave home, go before us, dear God, and protect us from every device of the enemy. We thank you for it and receive it done. In Jesus' name, so it is. Amen. All right. God bless everybody. I pray that the word of God will bless you and will keep you. I don't know that Valerie Johnson's on, but I saw that today was her birthday. So happy birthday, sis. Blessings to you. Uh, we praise God for each and every one of you. Thank you for sharing as soon as you come on. Please share the video, type in, catch the replay, hashtag graced for today. God bless everybody. We hope to see you in the morning at 7.15 a.m. Central Time. Until then, remember this, time spent in the word of God is never wasted and you have been graced for today. Have a great day, everybody. Peace.